Welcome everybody back to the Jayhawks Dynasty where we finally reached that 50 episode mark and how else would we do it without a big matchup against a rival in the Big 12 Texas Longhorns is the team that we're going to be taking on today we have not seen them since last season and we have an opportunity now to solidify ourselves in the running or front runner spot of the Big 12 championship game. We can easily get into it if we take down the Longhorns today and we will take a two game lead over them in the conference or conference standings. But Daniel Hishaw Jr. is gonna start the day with a four yard catch. He does not see much time on the field whenever we are not up by a lot. So it's surprising to see him in the game. Third and two on the same possession. Butler rolling around, nobody's open. So he goes for it himself. He goes out of bounds after two yards, and at fourth and inches, you know we're going for it. Butler, give it to Neal, right up the middle. Actually had a lot of room on the left side, but he gets blocked in by his own man. He's not able to cut out there. That could have easily been a big touchdown to start the day. Now, first and ten under center. Butler pump fakes, fires up the field to Cardell, and he's going to scamper for 23 yards. And off of a bye week, the Jayhawks have an excellent opportunity to come out strong with Arnold on the slant, and he's pushed in. Touchdown, Jayhawks. Maurice Butler continues his game from last week as we saw him throw five touchdowns against the Iowa State Cyclones a week ago, and now he starts his day strong, and Caleb Taylor starts his day even stronger. Ever since that Charlotte game, he struggled to get into the backfield, but he is now one sack away from the school record for career sacks and season sacks. Now he gets it. Jonathan Brooks makes a redemption there on the catch and run off of the running back route. And the Longhorns continue up the field. First and 10, Hudson Card wants to throw again to the outside, and he's got Dixon. And Clevante Dixon is going to get 17 yards as he's pulled down by his shoulder pad. Second and four now. Card going to give it. No, he fakes it. It's going to be an option play. He throws to O'Meary, and he's into the end zone. Troy O'Meary, 16 yards, and number 21 gets his first touchdown of the day as Hudson Card looks sharp on that one. Third and six on the next drive. Butler wants to throw it to the outside into coverage, and it's incomplete. The Jayhawks go three and out after allowing a touchdown from the Longhorns. So now they have to bounce back on defense. A minute remains. Hudson Card, first and 10 out of this first quarter. He wants to run it. Smith misses him. He pushes a man over, and he's got a first down. One of the toughest running quarterbacks we've seen all year long. Later on that same drive, they're in the red zone now. Third and seven. Card out of the shotgun. Looks to throw, and he's sacked. Brought down by who else? Caleb Taylor. And he might have just broken the record there, and it looked like he did considering the pop-up. Now Butler's going to get it to Neal on the wheel route as he runs over a man and cuts it inside. 26 yards later, he is finally forced out of bounds on the 5 or around the 40, 35-yard line. Now first and 10, he's going to go to Johnson across the middle. Got some nice blocking. He cuts it outside. Beautiful run, and he's finally brought down that time at the 5-yard line. I can say it now. Second and goal, we give it to Neal up the left side, and a good lead block gets him an easy touchdown run. As neither defense came to play today, it looks like on a third and three. Hudson Card is currently in the injury tent looking over his injury. He is in the medical tent. They look like he might miss the rest of the game, but what does it matter if this guy can come in and throw it to Troy O'Meara for 14 yards every play? Now, Berg out of the shotgun. He doesn't have much experience, but he can scramble. First and 10, he wants to throw it out to Helm. And he's going to get Gunner Helm for six yards here in this second quarter. Second and four now. Berg continues to be the quarterback. He's going to take it out of the shotgun, fake it to Brooks, and he is going to go in into the end zone. Romello Dotson over pursued, and Brandon Berg comes in and leads the Longhorns right down the field for a score and a 17-14 lead. Neither team has been stopped easily. This time, Devin Neal's on the outside to the 50, to the 40. 35-30. He's going to get tripped up. Oh, my goodness. That could have easily been a touchdown. And now the Jayhawks instead have to try and score here. Third and seven. They go outside to Arnold. And he's got it on the curl route out 17 yards later. He's got it out of the six-yard line. Now second and goal. Butler out of the shotgun. Wants to throw. Nobody's open. Instead, he takes off himself. And he's got it. Nobody was even close to it. He just runs right into the end zone. Honestly, he probably could have walked into that one. And the Jayhawks regain their lead. 
Now here come the Longhorns. First and 10. Berg wants to throw across the middle. He's got Dixon. Dixon breaks a tackle. He's running to the right side, and he's brought down. I always hate those open field tackles like that because if that man misses, the Longhorns receiver is just going to go right into the end zone. Now second and five later on the drive in the red zone again. Berg, no pass this or no run this time. Instead, it's a pass, and that is a regrettable decision as Caleb Taylor gets them again in the Longhorns settle for another field goal here. 17 all, make it 20 21 is the score here with 34 seconds left now a first and 10 butler we are on a drive with the chance to score throws to the outside and it's cut off intercepted by johnson sean johnson's gonna miss the tackle johnson's got a lead block he's just got to beat the lineman ford jr is gonna miss him in the 30 20 10 5 johnson a pick six the longhorns defense gives them a lead going into halftime as jameer johnson the cornerback read that beautifully and he's able to get into the end zone on the interception. So now here we are in the second half. Berg is going to be on the field again. And Brooks gets less than two yards on the play. He's going to lose both of them in a third and four now. Brandon Berg out of the shotgun with Brooks to his left. He's going to give it to Brooks again. And Brooks keeps it up the middle. He's stuffed. He got three yards. Looked like momentum would get him there. But instead, Cornell Wheeler with a great tackle. So now give it to Devin Neal on a third and two. And he just continues running right in between defender after defender and the Jayhawks running back strong day continues second and 15 Butler goes to Harris and he gets cut down at the knees but a 13 yard catch and run as he falls down fourth and three now Butler out of the shotgun he's gonna call Neal in the block gonna take the snap wants to throw again fires again and Harris another slant uncovered with a nine yard catch there goes the Jayhawks offense. Second and four. Give it to Neal up the middle. Got some great blocking into the end zone. He goes. Touchdown. 16 yards. No one was there. And they let Devin Neal run right down the middle of their line. And the Jayhawks have taken a 28-27 lead. Now Berg on the next possession. Cuts it upfield on the read option. And 13 yards later, he's got a first down. Now third and eight on the same drive. We're right around the two-minute warning in this third quarter berg wants to throw to the outside instead he fires to the left side and he just overthrows him fourth and eight and the longhorns would have to punt so the jayhawks have a third down here read option it looks like they give it to neil and he does not get there he is stuffed and i mean slammed to the ground so fourth and inches three of three on fourth down so far make it four of four where he's just barely tripped up if he had cut it outside that's probably about a 25-yard gain there. Now, 28-27 as we go into the final play of the quarter. Butler is going to be sacked. He looked down after looking up the field, and he had three linemen right in his face. And instead, it's a second and 23 as we begin this fourth quarter. Butler wants to throw. Fires deep downfield to Johnson, and he's got it. Touchdown, Jayhawks. That one continued for so long. It just kept sailing. And 45 yards later, the Jayhawks are up 35-27 and a five-yard loss by Jonathan Brooks. And now a third and nine, third and eight, excuse me, with 7.05 and counting. Berg wants to throw, fires to the outside into coverage. He's intercepted. Jacoby Bryant with an athletic interception. And the Jayhawks have an opportunity here. Third and 10, Butler rolling around and he's intercepted. That time it's the linebacker Barnes who hopefully does not return it. But he's past the 30 to the 15 or to the 25 and right around the 22. So an interception by both teams give the Longhorns life. Third and 10. Berg out of the shotgun. It's not a run this time. Instead, it's a pass and his tight end drops it. So they would settle for a short field goal here as that one will go right down the middle. And that is a close game. Five-point game now with about 420 remaining. Neal is going to get it on the next drive, and nobody's going to even touch him after 15 yards. He's finally wrestled to the ground, and now a first and 10. Butler out of the shotgun, still in the lead, so nothing to panic about yet as Devin Neal is on another wheel route for 12 yards. He has had so much impact on this game. First and 10, Butler play action. It looks like he's got two backs beside him. Pesic Hickson and Hishaw, not Neal in the game. First and 10, fire down, field, and it's intercepted again. Johnson, again, is going to be broken the tackle. He's got a lot of room on the right side. Nobody's there to get him. To the 50, to the 40, 
35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown again, Jameer Johnson, and that one wasn't really Butler's fault, Sean Johnson did not cut his route like he should have, and instead of being up, the Jayhawks are down 3 now as they get it to Arnold, though, and a great way to start the drive, 29 yards on the play, first and 10, Butler going to give it to Neal up the middle, cuts it back to the right side, misses a man, down to the 10, to the 5, and he's into the end zone. 37 yards, Jayhawk strike. And what in the world is going on? Devin Neal has broken the record for career touchdowns in Kansas history. Now Brandon Berg on the next drive. He's got a screen. The man is missed. Great blocking up the middle. He's got a lot of room and another big play here to the 50, to the 40. And finally at the 35. He has wrestled down again. Now third and 14. Berg out of the shotgun. Has to do a lot on this play. Fires to a wide open Allen who makes a man miss. And oh my goodness. Eric Allen into the end zone. The Jayhawks have a minute 22 to do something here on first and 10. Out of the shotgun. Butler's going to go deep downfield to the 20. And it's a dive and catch. Lawrence Arnold. Now a minute 04 remains on a few plays later. Second and 10. Butler rolling around nobody's open so instead he takes it himself he wants the touchdown and he's not there maybe to the one in a first and goal after a penalty read option keep it himself cut up the middle and a touchdown six yards strike Maurice Butler gives the Jayhawks a four-point lead and the Longhorns have one more opportunity here on third and ten as time expires Berg deep downfield he's hit fumbled incomplete pass and that will do it the Jayhawks have beat both Oklahoma and Texas in one season as the final score is 49 45 and Devin Neal undoubtedly gets the player of the game 196 yards three rushing touchdowns and three catches for 42 yards on top of that what a win for the Jayhawks this just gives them even more hope of making that Big 12 championship game as we head to the post-game press conference with head coach Smeems. After losing to this team for so long, it, it feels so nice to say that we beat both Oklahoma, Iowa, or all three actually, but Oklahoma, Iowa State, and Texas in one season. 26 of 42, 416 yards, two touchdowns, three interceptions. Not the greatest game from Butler, but he got it done when we needed him most. Devin Neal, the best game of his career, undoubtedly. 24 attempts, 196 yards, and three touchdowns. He had the 48-yard touchdown run there late in that fourth quarter. Maurice Butler, 7 of 46, two rushing touchdowns himself. And that's really where he's done better than Conrad Hawley, is getting out of the pocket and running. Lawrence Arnold, 7 for 125 and a touchdown. Donnell Harris, the next best, 4 for 38. So a really dominant game by Arnold. We did have Sean Johnson with 3 for 90 and 1 touchdown with that 45-yard catch and run on the end to the end zone. Trevor Cardell, 4 for 36. Not the best game from him. Only one sack allowed, really, and um, it was from the offensive lineman. Romello Dotson, 8 total tackles, 7 solo, 1 assisted. We had a couple guys with sacks. Caleb Taylor had 2 himself as he broke the record for most sacks in a career and in a season for the Jayhawks now. So he's up now around the record for most sacks in a season by the NCAA. Let's see if we can look at that. NCAA records, we have most sacks in a season is going to be, let's see, let's see, let's see, individual season. Um, most sacks is 24. Now let's see where Caleb Taylor sits at now because I know he does not have 24 yet, obviously, but he is mighty close from what I've seen. Caleb Taylor is going to have 16 sacks with about, what, four games left? So he has plenty of time to get eight more sacks, in my opinion. We've got Oklahoma State, Texas Tech, Kansas State, and that's it. Three games left to get eight sacks. I don't know if we'll be able to do it, but we need one of these teams to have a very bad offensive line. And as you can see... We are now in the top 20. We jumped up a lot in the last few weeks. We went 24 on our bye week, number 20 last week in the episode you guys saw on Monday. And now this week, we are top 20. We're number 20 exactly. As you can see, the rankings have been shaken up a little bit. Ohio State took a massive fall after a loss to unranked Illinois. 
Yes, you heard that right. Unranked Illinois beat Ohio State, and that means the top four is now Tulane, Southern Mississippi, Akron, and Florida State, who just jumped up, actually, after beating number 19 Clemson. Then we've got Georgia, Washington, Miami, Florida, Northwestern, and Notre Dame rounding out the top 10. Notre Dame themselves just took a loss to a top 25 Texas A&M team. So this is one of the most diverse rankings I've ever seen. A lot of teams are moving every week, and it seems like it's never stable. And I'm interested to see if we have two smaller schools finally make a conference championship or a BCS championship. And as you can see, we are now in the front runner seat for this side of the conference. We are two games ahead of second place and third place, really, all of these people. But we have the tiebreakers against Texas, against Oklahoma, and we just need to get it against these last three teams that I know we can beat if we play how we have. This team has showed so much heart, but next week we still have to focus on a tough opponent. Just because their record's bad doesn't mean they're a bad team. Oklahoma State has given us problems in the past. Last year they actually upset us in a game that I thought we were guaranteed to win where we had a chance to declare or claim a bowl game if we had won that game in Oklahoma State. So thankfully this year we are going in there top 20 and we have a chance to beat up on them and get revenge for last season. How do you guys feel about this game? Comment your score predictions. Thank you guys for watching this series. If you do enjoy all of my videos, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next episode as we take on the Oklahoma State Cowboys.